Yo, what's up, guys? Saturday morning. Uh, well, 11.30 Eastern. Morning for some. Afternoon for others. <clears throat> but anyway, I just wanted to wish everybody a good morning. Whether you're a, uh, a collector, an investor, a flipper, someone in the hobby, good morning. And uh, just want to talk about some content. I've been watching a lot of content. I watch all the content. I watch the vlogs. I watch the collectors. I watch ho Hobby Palooza, all the stuff. I enjoy all of it uh, as it relates to me in the hobby because I do all of it. Now, I'm not a vlogger. I don't do social media stuff at card shows or anything, but I enjoy watching the, the content I find entertaining. I don't necessarily find it influential. I just find it entertaining. Again, you know, I do everything in the hobby. I collect, I buy, I sell, I trade to get items that I want. The hobby is not my livelihood. I don't sell cards to pay my bills or to buy cars or fancy things. Most of the money that I make off cards, I either save it or I buy more cards. So that's just where I am on that. Um, but I've been watching some videos and talking about different things, you know, this versus that, um, the market coming down. Um, and I just want to give some of my opinions. I'm going to tell a story and this story may relate differently to everybody. The characters in this story may be different to you guys, but, um, really quick, anyone who thinks that the hobby isn't based around money. Um, it's just a foolish thought. Okay. Now I know you have hardcore collectors that say I'm strictly in it for the collecting and they may be, they may be, they buy a card. It goes in their box. It's never to be seen again. I don't doubt that at all because I have cards that I have bought for the same reason. However, the person that you bought it from more than likely made money off of you in that transaction. So there's money being made off of you as a collector. It's always going to happen. Now, unless you're older than me, and I'm, I'm 44. I'm going to put that out there. I'm 44. And as a kid going to the card shop, sometimes I would sell my cards to the card shop owner, and the card shop owner would give me less than Beckett price. Yes, Beckett price. That's another thing. Beckett, there was a price guide. Why would there be a price guide if the hobby didn't have money involved? But anyway, I would sell my cards. I wouldn't get Beckett comps. I would not get Beckett comps because the shop owner has to make money to pay his overhead, to pay his bills, to keep his shop open so that the collector has a place to come in and buy their cards. So sometimes as a seller, you take a loss. Sometimes you buy a card, you get a good deal. But even if you want to go all the way back to when baseball cards were still being first being printed. There's a gigantic buzzard on the side of the road. I don't fly into my car. But um, even when they were first being printed, they were being used, uh, you know, whether it was to sell tobacco products. Maybe, you know, Seanus Wagner was on tobacco boxes to help sell tobacco products. Tops used baseball cards to try to originally to sell their bubble gum. So did Fleer to sell their bubble gum. So even going back to the first days of manufacturers putting things out, it may not have necessarily been the cards that were for sale. However, it was the likeliness of the figure on the card that was being used as advertisement, again, as business to help sell an item. So any way you want to look at it, there's any kind of angles you want to look at it. The, the hobby has always been driven by, by money. It's always been driven by money, uh, such as the capital capitalist uh, economy that we live in. Uh, if I go to the store to buy a soda or even a water, people sell water, go figure. But if I go to, to the store to buy one, the, uh, the, the store is going to make money off me. Okay. Say they bought the bottle of water for 50 cents. They sell it to me for a dollar. They're not going to be like, oh, this guy's thirsty. He needs this. I'm going to give it to him at cost. It's just not the way the world works. It's just not the way things are. 
But anyway, I kind of got off on that a little more than I wanted to. But anyway, you get the point. Whether you're a collector, an investor, a flipper, um, whatever you do in the hobby that makes you happy, that's what's important. Um, and we got Pearl Jam on, man, and I've talked right through it. All right, guys, what's the song? We're getting the outro right now. Hey, Joel, what's going on? Me and Joel had a lengthy conversation yesterday. All right, enough with the Pearl Jam. Somebody can tell me what it is. But, um, but yeah, we got Zach, Joel, Trevor, Moneybound, M. What's going on? So, uh, just to hammer home the point that <laughs> the hobby's money driven, whether you're a collector, investor, flipper, whatever, someone's making money off of someone, someone's selling to someone, someone's buying off someone. If that wasn't the case, you wouldn't be finding your collectibles. You wouldn't be finding your profits, you know, whatever it may be. But I want to tell a quick story. And you guys relate this however you want. I'm just going to tell it in my head. And you guys have heard stories along the same lines. But you're the new kid in school. Or you're, you're the popular kid in school. Let's say this. Say you're the popular kid in school, man. You got the good looks. You're the quarterback of the football team. You got all the friends. Um the girls, and, and what happens? A new kid shows up. A new kid from out of town comes to school. It's your senior year, man. You've been killing it, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior year. Football team hasn't been doing very good. You guys have won like two games, but it doesn't matter. You're popular. Um, new kid comes to school, comes to town. And all of a sudden, man, you don't like this guy. You're like, oh, man, he's going to come in. He's going to take all the girls. He's going to be Mr. Popular. He's he's the new kid. But then you realize you get to meet him and you realize and you're like, man, th this guy's actually pretty cool. We got a lot in common. We both play football. We both collect sports cards. We got a lot in common. We got a lot in common. We're both from a divorced family, whatever it may be. Football season comes along. He wins the starting quarterback position. Oh, shit. Now, now, not only has he taken your popularity, but now he's a starting starting quarterback. So you have a couple choices. You can either be like, man, I quit. I'm just going to go back and sit and hope that this guy fails. Hope that he fails and prove to the world that I should have been the starter. Or you're going to assume your role and you guys are going to succeed as a team together as a team. And what happens? You guys go to the state championship. You go to the state championship. You've, you've won two games your last three years, and all of a sudden you're in the state championship and you've got popularity. You're in the news. Everybody knows who you are. And you guys are riding the high and you're riding the coattails of the new guy. And you're like, man, this is awesome. This is great. Then you get to the state championship and he has a bad performance and you guys lose. Now you lose. And now all of a sudden you're like, man, maybe this wasn't a good idea. Um, you start pointing fingers, blaming, oh, whose fault is it? Why we lost? Why did we lose? Instead of saying, instead of saying we were very successful, instead of saying we were very successful, we reached heights we've never reached before. You start pointing fingers because something bad happens and you say, whose fault was this? And now all of a sudden, the person in the beginning who had the most to lose, which was the popular guy, he had the most to lose when a new kid came to town. All of a sudden, he has the most to gain. All of a sudden, he has the most to gain. And the guy who was the new kid now has the most to lose. How the tables have turned. And you pounce on it. And you say, I told you so. I told everybody. I told everybody. And you basically take someone else's failure to make yourself feel good. Um, and it sucks because sometimes that is the harsh reality in the brutal society that we live in. Not in all cases. Not in all cases. But anyway, that's just a small story I wanted to tell. You may have understood it. You may have not. But you take, take who you want to take and apply it to whatever character you want to apply it to. Take your collector and apply it to somebody. Take the team and apply it to something. Take the flipper and apply it to something. The investor, apply it to something. Apply it however you want. Use your own imagination because everybody thinks differently. We're not all robots. That's what's great. 
and just write the story how you want to write it by applying the characters in the essential places that you feel fit. And at the end of the day, all that really matters is that we're just having fun in the hobby, at least for me. You know, rather people want to label me a flipper and not like me or label me collector and like me or accept me for doing everything that I do because I'm just enjoying what I do. That's cool, too. It goes for everybody, not just me individually. I may have spoke in the first person, but, you know, whatever you do, your niche in the hobby, don't let, any, don't let anybody like change your mindset. I will say the hobby palooza helped me get even in more touch with my collector, but still I just see a lot of, uh, content and it's not even the content itself. It's the, um, it's not even the content itself. It's the comments that I'm reading on the live streams and stuff. It's the comments coming in from the viewers that's fueling the content creator to either talk about certain things or to take sides. A lot of it is things that wouldn't even be talked about by the person doing the live stream if the comment was not brought up. So it's not just content creators. It's the people who watch and have a lot of comments that get the content creators actually talking about it and get people nipping at each other's heels about petty stuff. So, like I said, apply that however you want. Check out some uh, comments here. Only got 19 watching, so a lot of people probably won't even hear this little discussion, but that's cool. We got NBA playoffs going on tonight. Let's talk about that. Um, <laughs> Brian says, go Suns. Man, it's two to two back in Phoenix, right? So we'll see. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Um, I'm not even going to relate the NBA playoffs to sports cards because we're in the finals. If you're buying basketball, you should be buying players that were eliminated a while back. That's where I'm looking for my best value at the moment. Um, I'm looking for some nice vintage cards, a nice Dan Marino card, probably at the national going to shop around. Um, and yeah, I'm just I'm just looking for deals right now. I mean, I don't have any essential or big time targets. If I see something at a good price that I believe is a nice card, then I'm just looking for a deal. Let's see who we got. Anyway, Pearl Jam was on earlier, and uh, it was alive, so nobody guessed the song alive. So you missed the Pearl Jam. If you're coming in late to the live stream. Make sure you get back and watch it from the beginning. It's not a rant. I don't like to call things rants. Um, it's just an opinion of mine. And an opinion can be an opinion without it being a rant. Um, you know, and I think a lot of times when content creators say they're going to rant, it's just them speaking their mind. Um, a rant is usually when someone's being really negative and just wants to be crazy. And I don't think anybody's intentions are to be negative. Um, but also, you got to be realistic. You know, we're in a realistic state of the hobby right now. The market's not up. In my opinion, the market's not up. The market's not down. It's realistic. It's just realistic. It was overinflated. For whatever reason, you can call it the perfect storm. You can blame a certain set of people. You can say it was overinflated because of flippers. You can say it was overinflated because of COVID. You can say it was overinflated because collectors continue to pay big bucks for collectibles. You could say it's overinflated because manufacturers the prices keep going up, but it all it all it all adds up into one big giant snowball of overinflation. It's not one person's fault, not one group's fault, not one anybody's fault. And now it's back to realistic. And um, you know, I don't think it's going to chase a lot of people off. I'm seeing a lot of things saying, "Oh, right now with the market down, the flippers are going to tuck tail and run." I don't think so. They may cut losses, but that happens in every market. It happens in every market. If someone was in the stock market, they went on Robinhood or whatever, had no idea, not a stockbroker, never done Wall Street at all in their life, and all of a sudden they're like, boom, I want to buy a bunch of stocks. I have no idea what I'm buying. They get lucky and they make money, or they don't get lucky and they lose. Either way, no one in the stock market really gives a shit. No one really gives a shit. It's not like, oh, my God. 
this people on this Robin Hood app or invading my territory. You know, everybody kind of minds their own business. But um, Brian, Joel says, Brian, spite on. Since the market went down 30, 40%, some of the dealers aren't marking cards down, so it's hard to find a good deal. Um, I'll see. Compared to pre-C19, the market is steady, in my opinion. Um, I, I've heard, uh, I, I've gotten some feedback from some recent shows, and I've heard that the um, the uh, the sellers are actually coming down on their prices because they're at a point to where they're like, they need to get some income. Like a lot of um, sellers or dealers have money tied up into these cards. And I, I'm hearing that they're starting to take, you know, comp and even under comp. Uh, not in all cases, not all dealers are the same. Everybody's in a different situation financially, but some of them are just trying to get some of their tied up money out so they can get some of it back into some other uh, fresh inventory. So I am hearing that coming out of some of the shows. Um, as far as price tags on cards, stuff may be overpriced on price tags. So if you take it for face value and you look at a card in a showcase and you're like, man, that card is 20% over comp, that doesn't necessarily mean that's what the dealer is asking for. Just a lot of dealers don't change out their price tags and things like that because the market changes so much that they have a lot of times they might have a hard time keeping up. And I'm not completely defending the dealers, but I know that this is one fact. And, and a lot of times you would just be better off to ask what someone wants for a card as opposed to judging a book by its cover and looking at the actual price tag and being like, man, that's overpriced. I'm not even going to ask. Always ask. Right now, people are looking to sell. Um, it's a buyer's market. Like, it's realistic. I think it's a buyer's market and a seller's market. I think it's a buyer's market for nice cards that you couldn't afford, um, you know, a year ago. But I also think it's a seller's market if you have some nice items and you have, you know, people willing to pay top dollar for some rare stuff. So I think we're at a good medium right now. I don't see a big time collapse. That's going to be one thing that I do disagree with on some people, and that's fine. Some people may be foreshadowing a collapse. They may be hoping for a collapse because that would give them an opportunity to buy some cards. But when you hope for a collapse, again, if a collapse, some people are really going to fail for other people's benefits. I never like to capitalize on someone else's failure to benefit for myself. And long before I got into the YouTube and, and, and the stuff like that, I was doing the cards and I was just keeping to myself. And um, I've often I've often thought about going back to that, being like, man, I'm just going to go keep to myself with people like mud slinging and, and this, that and the other. You know, is it like. I told a story earlier about high school, not a personal, not a not a not a story of my life, but just a general high school type story. Because a lot of this kind of just reminds me of high school. Just kind of does, unfortunately. But anyway, guys, I got to get ready to go in, go to work. And um, yeah, without without people selling cards, there would be nothing to buy. Like global sports, global sports card investor makes a good point. Without dealers, you know, there would be, you know, without dealers, because dealers have to make money. Dealers don't just give away cards for free. You know, <laughs> they just... You know, that's just it. So dealers have to make money and dealers get a lot of their inventory from flippers, believe it or not. So and they make a lot of money. They do group submissions for flippers and then buy their cards off of them. You know, I've seen it in my LCS. So, all right, guys, I'm going to um, get ready to go into work. Uh, hopefully uh, you guys have a good day. Hopefully you guys find a card that you like and you buy it, whether it's a base card, a parallel, a jersey an auto, a rookie card, whatever it is that you like, whatever it is that you like that brings you enjoyment in this hobby, you do it and you buy it, okay? Don't listen to content creators that say, this is the stuff to buy right now, even if it's me. Say, Steve, kiss my ass, I'm going to buy what I want. I don't do those kind of videos, but if you ever got that vibe off of me, so when it is. Um, and that's all I really got to say this Saturday morning, and I'm going to go in and enjoy my day at work and I'll see you guys on my Monday live stream if I don't see it tomorrow morning. Guys, have a good one. Until next time, take it easy. Good luck in your investing.